Welcome to Free Code Camp. I'm Commander Candy of Coding Commanders, and today we're going to learn all about set theory and how we can use it to write some really awesome code. You're watching the second video in our Intro to Logic series. If you haven't seen the first video yet, Intro to Propositional Logic, you might want to check that out. Introduction to Logic for Programmers, Video 2, Set Theory. You'll find homework and documentation at codingcommanders.com slash logic.php. As programmers and aspiring programmers, the first question you probably have is, how is set theory gonna help me with programming? Generally speaking, web applications tend to include a database, server code, and client-side code. To illustrate the language relationship, I will use an analogy from my video on front-end versus back-end web development. In the very front, you'll find HTML and CSS displaying data to the client, AKA the user. HTML is kind of like display shelves at a shop, and CSS is kind of like the person who designed the shelves. In the very back, we have a database. This is where we store data, kind of like the shop's warehouse. Popular database management systems include MySQL, MongoDB, and Postgres. Database design is arguably the most important part of your application's design. Oftentimes, it's the root of your application, and poor database management or implementation can slow down the entire development process, and it can even slow down your entire application. Standing right in front of our database, we have Alligator Server-Side Code Woman. She's kind of like the store manager. She can communicate with the warehouse workers, also known as the database management system. She can also perform calculations, manipulations, and has security clearance to deal with sensitive information. She's often in charge of the application's logic and infrastructure. However, she isn't the best at dealing with customers. So at the front of the store, we have our customer service manager. JavaScript. JavaScript works on the client side. It can interact with the HTML and CSS. It can go in the front of the house and talk to the designers and the clients to make sure our display shelves are displayed in a user-friendly manner. She can also perform calculations and manipulations on non-secure data that is passed to her from Alligator server-side code woman. Set theory is the foundation of database design. A big part of server-side code and application design is interacting with the database. So if you become a logic rock star, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you to design solid applications. As a matter of fact, in computer programming, we have data types called arrays and objects. These data types are used for storing sets of data. These data sets are often directly defined by our database tables. So next you might be wondering, what is a set? A set is a collection of objects or elements. Say you're designing a login page. You'll deal with sets of user data. Each user object may be a set of data including username, email, and password. Users might be a set of user objects. In mathematics, we say X is an object and S is a set. If the above statement's true, then X can either belong to S or X cannot belong to S. If you remember back to my intro to propositional logic video, a proposition is a statement that can either be true or false. The statement X is an element of S can be true, X or false. It can be true, or it can be false, but it can't be both. In mathematics, if it's true, we say X is an element of S and is denoted just like you see. And if X is not a member of S, we denote it like this. Let's say set S is equal to all possible even numbers. You tell me, are the following statements true or false? Two is an element of S. Yes, that is true. Two is an even number. Three is an element of S. Nope, 
Three's odd, it's not even. Seven is not an element of S. That's true. Seven's not an element of S because seven is odd. How do you define a set? There's two ways to define a set. The first way is by extension. And we do that like so by putting values into curly brackets. We have S equals 2, 4, 6. And then we have X equals an empty set. There's no values in there. And Y equals basically all even numbers starting at 2. What that dot, dot, dot means is that the pattern's going to continue. So Y is going to equal 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. The second way we can define a set is by intention. That's definition by membership conditions. So we could say X is a member if X is an even number. Or in the second example, X is a member such that X is an even number and it's also greater than zero. S is gonna equal the set of all real counting numbers. So tell me, are these statements true or false? One is an element of S. True. 1,000 is an element of S. 1,000 is a real counting number. That is true. Negative 1,000 is not an element of S. That is true as well. X such that X equals 3. X plus negative 3 equals 0. True, because 3 plus negative 3 equals 0. X is less than zero. Err, false. If X equals three, then X must be greater than zero. So this is false. X is greater than two. True, because three, yes indeed, is greater than two. Sets are equal if they contain the exact same elements and order doesn't matter. So if S equals one, two, and three, and t equals 2, 3, and 1, s and t are still equal sets. And if sets are equal, remember by conditionals from intro to propositional logic, x is an element of s if and only if x is an element of t subsets. If all of a's elements are contained in b, then we say a is a subset of b. If A is a subset of B and X is an element contained in A, then X has to also be an element contained in B. Null set. That means it's completely empty. There's no values in it. And we write it like that. Union. Okay. Look at that diagram with A and B. A union B. X such that x is an element of a or x is an element of b. If you look in the diagram, everything in a and everything in b is going to be included in a union b. x belongs to a or it could belong to b, either one. Intersection. Intersection is going to be this area. I tried to make it kind of purple, combining the blue and the pink. X such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. A minus B. X such that X is an element of A and X is not an element of B. Okay? So if you look here, this white area that's not shaded, that would be A minus B. That's the elements contained in A that ain't in B. Cartesian products. Okay. Just relax for a second and sit back and just get the concept. The Cartesian product is the product of two sets. Say A is a set which contains the values A, B, and C, and B is a set that contains the values X and Y. We would write the Cartesian product as A times B, and it's going to equal all possible ordered pairs. Ordered pairs are when we take an element in A and we match it with an element in B. So all possible ordered pairs are going to be AX, 
ay, bx, by, cx, and cy. Most programming languages also have some predefined functions that are going to help us find values within a set. Because of that, I'm going to spare you all the mathematical equations to calculate these things. Uh, most of them, I think we know what they mean. Like we might have a set of values and we want to find out what's the biggest value in there that would be finding the max value of the set. Most programming languages have a function for that. If we want to find the smallest value in a set, we'll look for the minimum. Most programming languages have a function for that. For search, we, we could want to search for all kinds of things, and programming languages do tend to have different predefined functions where you might be searching for a particular string. Um, say you want to return any members of the set that contain IMG. You're looking for image content. Or maybe you're looking for a specific value. Maybe you are looking for the blog article that was posted on a specific date. So you're searching through the dates for the one that matches. Most programming languages have predefined functions to handle all this kind of stuff. So let's do an example, okay? You're making a game. When the game ends, the high score list is displayed. There are 10 spots on the high score list. Write the code. Okay, so first let's do our logic thing. Let's let T equal total score, H equal high scores, and S equals show high scores. Just in case the total score qualifies, we're going to have a function written somewhere to add that score to the high score list. We want the code add score to execute if and only if total score is an element uh, on the high score list. And total score is going to be included as a member on the high score list if and only if the total score is greater than the minimum score on the high score list, the smallest value there. And regardless, we are going to display the high score list. Somewhere we're going to have a function with code to display the top 10 scores. And if your total score qualifies, you will see your name and score there. So let's write it in PHP. We have dollar sign total score equal to a function that we have written out elsewhere, which calculates the current player's total score. Dollar sign high scores is going to equal another function that we have someplace else, which fetches, I probably have a query there to go ahead, go to the database, get those 10 high scores, and we'll store it in dollar sign high scores. Dollar sign min, in PHP we do have a predefined function to find the minimum value in a set. So dollar sign min is going to equal the minimum of dollar sign high scores. If total score is greater than the minimum, then we're going to execute the code to add the total score to the high score list. And no matter what, in any case, we will display the high score list for everybody to see. If you made it as a member on the high score list, you will see your name there. If you did not, you will still see the chosen ones who did make it on the high score list. Now let's check it out in JavaScript. We have var total score equaling that function to calculate the current total score. We have our high scores equaling that function to go to the database and get the high scores. We have var min equaling in JavaScript. We also have a predefined function to find the minimum value in a set. And if total score is greater than that minimum, we're going to execute the code to add that total score to our high score list. And no matter what, in any case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to display the high score list for the player to see. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to go to codingcommanders.com slash logic.php 
with logic, programming, math. The only way you get better is by practice. You watch the video, you learn the concept, then you have to apply it. So please check out the homework. The last video I had a little quiz for homework. This time I have three word problems. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this video. I will be checking the comments. If you complete the homework and you feel like you want me to look it over, you can go ahead, upload it to GitLab, GitHub, wherever you want. Tweet the link. Make sure to mention me and free code camp. I will try to get to everybody. If you do reach out and it's been like a couple days, you haven't heard from me, feel free to give me a little nudge. In the next video of the Intro to Logic for Computer Programmer Free Code Camp series, I am going to apply all the set theory we learned today, test some actual SQL. We're going to learn how to make awesome databases using set theory. Thank you again for watching my video and until next time, happy coding.